Hi, I'm Chris. And in this video on building data-inspired ways of working, I want to take you through the common anti-patterns that undermine your developer experience and derail your metrics program and ultimately your team success. Before we dive into what those anti-patterns are, let's just take a quick recap on what metrics are and why they're important. Metrics are primarily the qualitative and quantitative signals of health. They give insight into the health of your team's productivity, their engagement, their experience, their efficiency, and their ability to deliver value according to plan. They matter because when they're used correctly, they build alignment, they build autonomy, they create accountability, and most importantly, they stimulate and spark action, which is the primary objective of surfacing facts and insights that relate to how you work so that you can reduce friction and optimize your ways of working. However, the core pitfalls in the use of metrics, which everybody knows about, is primarily related to their misuse, the weaponization of insights and the withholding of information that undermines trust and sets your team's effectiveness back and really creates a very unhealthy developer experience overall. So in that context, that's why it's really important to spot the anti-patterns and to be aware of the behaviors, the subtle language uh, cues that can be so subversive in your ways of working that ultimately set you back. So let's dive in and take a look at the top 10 anti-patterns for using metrics in your developer experience. Anti-pattern one, vanity metrics. Vanity metrics help you uh, or make you look good, but ultimately they lack actionable insight. For example, lines of code. Vanity metrics are harmful because they focus on output over outcome and they really mislead stakeholders, but make you look good primarily. The solution here is really to focus on those actionable uh, metrics that are tied to the outcomes that the team has defined or the business has defined as being primarily important to your success. Anti-pattern two, metrics as a blame tool. Here, metrics are used to single out individual performance or poor performance for a team. Blame-based anti-patterns really breed fear. They reduce psychological safety and discourage collaboration in the way that the teams effectively communicate and mistrust the way that teams can interact with each other. The solution here is to frame metrics with their real intent, that is for growth, to accelerate your learning so that you can grow faster and go faster and not be used as a tool for punishment. Anti-pattern number three, ignoring team context. Context is critical. And here the anti-pattern applies, uh, comes from applying the same metrics to all teams without considering their unique composition, way of working, work items that they're assigned, and their unique goals and challenges. It's harmful to ignore context because it fails to reflect the unique uh, aspects of a particular team and the nuances of diverse teams and workflows. The solution here is to co-create metrics with teams, aligning them with specific objectives and their unique dynamics in their ways of working. Anti-pattern four, overloading teams with metrics. The definition of this anti-pattern is really looking at too many metrics or applying too many metrics for a team to look at and creating analysis paralysis. This is harmful because it dilutes focus, creates confusion, and increases the reporting burden. A solution here is to be really clear on why you're looking at a particular set of metrics, i.e. an outcome that you're looking to improve, and select only the few that matter most in being able to track the impact of an experiment or a change in your way of working. Anti-pattern five, over-optimization. This is where teams will focus only on optimizing one metric in particular, and it leads to the detriment or undermines other metrics that may have adverse impacts upon. 
it's harmful because of these unintended consequences, like gamification, because you're only focused at, on one metric and it becomes easy to really trick it into telling a particular story that you need it to tell, such as technical debt or burnout. The solution here is to use a much more balanced approach. Again, come back to the core outcome you're seeking to improve and ensure that there are two to three metrics that provide relevant lenses or different angles into you understanding that particular practice that's affecting that outcome. Anti-pattern six, lack of transparency. Here, we're really talking about a pattern of withholding information or hiding insights from metrics from teams that it's affecting most. It's harmful simply because you're eroding trust. You're uh, perpetuating the, the perception that teams are being spied upon and feeling monitored and unsupported. The simple solution here is to be really open and transparent. Provide teams with their information so that they can be really clear on the actions that they can take and also be clear on who else has access to their information in, and ideally be building a culture of safety around how that information is disseminated. Anti-pattern seven, misaligned incentives. Here we're talking about tying bonuses to particular outcomes from metrics such as velocity. This is harmful because it encourages gamification and undermines the overall health of a team working collaboratively and holistically to achieve an outcome, but by, by rather focusing only on those metrics that are tied to the incentive that encourages a, the, the, and distorts behavior. The solution here is to incentivize the desired outcomes across a number of different metrics, as well as the outcomes rather than outputs, such as collaboration, innovation, and ultimately the value that the team is set up to deliver for their customers. Anti-pattern eight, short-term thinking. Here, the definition of this anti-pattern is really about taking a myopic or very narrow lens on what the metric is telling you as a time frame or time series. It's unhelpful because it actually doesn't give you a broader range or a trend or a pattern that may be occurring. Ideally, you're looking for patterns in the signals that you're observing to look for sustained improvement and health in the outcome that you're wanting to get. And so the solution here is to look more broadly than just a short-term focus and identify the pattern across a longer horizon. Anti-pattern nine, focusing only on productivity or classically creating feature factories. Here, the definition of this anti-pattern is measuring how much work gets done whilst ignoring quality, morale, and user impact. So in other words, you're only building unsustainable but productive teams. Is this really what you want in your developer experience? I think not. It's harmful primarily because it leads to burnout and creates this poor experience of teams in your working environment and ultimately through poor experience and burnout, you're driving low retention. And so a solution here is to build a much more balanced portfolio of metrics that you're looking at. Take into account both quantitative and qualitative aspects of how you're measuring team health and performance and look at those feedback loops that give signals into sustainable and healthy practices. Anti-pattern 10, ignoring feedback loops. Here, you're really ignoring the principle of iteration and failing to review and adjust the metrics that you focus on based on the improvements and the outcomes that you achieve. And so this is harmful because metrics can become irrelevant or indeed counterproductive to your team's way of working. So the solution here is to make sure that you're either hitting the target metric that you have as a representation of the outcome you're seeking, and to periodically review metrics with teams to, so that you can adjust them. Um, as needed and align them with goals as your goals change. And so that's a quick wrap up of anti-patterns to spot in your developer experience and in building a data-driven way of working. The key takeouts are to remember, metrics are simply a tool, they're not a weapon. When you think of metrics, think holistically, think of 
productivity numbers, facts, as well as qualitative feelings, context, and ensure you're looking at a far more balanced approach in the data that you're collecting and gathering to provide insights into the health of your developer experience culture. Again, focus on outcomes and not outputs. And finally, ensure that you're collaborating with teams to define and track the metrics that matter most anchored in an ultimate objective or outcome that you're trying to achieve either in how you work or in what you're working on. And so here, be sure to use metrics to foster a culture of continuous improvement, iteration and growth, and ultimately help your teams achieve that next level of team performance that set them up in for a state of flow and in loving the way that they work in your culture and in your company. Thank you.